Emily, we're going to turn our attention back to kids going back to school, but also COVID-19 and protecting kids, teachers, school staff. Let's bring into the stream two important folk. We've got Pinar Kiskinochik, uh, the William W. George Chair and Professor in the School of Industrial and Systems Engineering at Georgia Tech, and our own Reggie Wade, who is a former teacher and now a journalist with us at Yahoo Finance. Reggie, you cover schools for us. She just had the special on getting back to class. Why don't you take the lead on this interview? Thank you very much, Adam. Professor, welcome to Yahoo Finance. You've come out with several of your colleagues with a study that shows an additional 70% of elementary school students may be infected with COVID-19 within three months if their schools don't have adequate masking policies. I have to ask you, do you believe that it was safer to start schools virtually than co doing it while coinciding with the rise in the Delta variant? So thank you, Reggie, for having me here. Um, maybe it would be good for us to um, start a little bit uh, with some of the facts that we know right now and what motivated our study. Um, so almost 160,000 new COVID cases have been reported on August 19. So COVID is not over as much as we would like it to be. Um, Delta variant is very contagious. Um, unfortunately, younger people are getting infected at a higher rate than what we have observed before. And they're also getting sicker compared to what we have observed during the earlier months uh, of the pandemic. Um, COVID-related hospitalizations are on the rise for all age groups and unfortunately going up at a high rate for the zero to 17 age group for kids. Uh, so we have about half of the US population uh, vaccinated, uh, maybe close to 60%, at least one dose but younger children are not eligible for the vaccine yet. Um, and even if you look at the 12 to 17 age group, the vaccination rates are still relatively low. So in Georgia, my home state, we have about 20% of the 11 to 13 year old children uh, who are vaccinated. These are middle schoolers, uh, but this is definitely not enough to give us the kind of protection that we would need. Um, so these are some of the facts that motivated our study. And you asked the question uh, whether we should have been safer to open virtual. I would say it depends. Um, with the right interventions, right precautions, we might be able to open the school safely and give that in-person experience to our children, but we have to do it right. Professor, we see what's going on in Texas and in Florida school boards having disputes with their governors over vaccine and mass mandates. Have you advised any of these school boards and not what advice would you give them going forward to this year? Yeah, I think it's really important for any decision maker to uh, base their decisions on data, information and uh, advice uh, coming from the experts. Uh, so none of us would attempt a brain surgery unless we were trained as a brain surgeon. When it comes to some of these public health decisions, it's not that dissimilar. These are very, very complex decisions and they need to be uh, made very carefully. Now, CDC recommends that schools implement layered prevention strategies, including universal masking for staff, teachers, visitors, and of course, all the students, students ages two years and older, regardless of their vaccination status. So I think this recommendation is very clear. And I would hope that uh, most of the school systems and decision makers would actually follow uh, this recommendation. And this is one of the things that we looked at in our research uh, to look at the impact of schools following this recommendation and possibly expanding it with other things such as testing and isolation versus going back, uh, having children go back to school uh, without any intervention as a COVID does, COVID does not exist, which is what we are seeing, unfortunately, in some schools. Are, are you hearing any kind of indication when children under the age of 12 may begin to be eligible for this vaccine? And how young will that go? Will it go down to two-year-olds? So we, we are, uh, many of us are of course eagerly awaiting for news about the uh, vaccine to be uh, approved for younger children. And of course that age group uh, is, is more complicated because there's a big variance in terms of their body weight and immune system and other things. 
uh, about the children in that age group. It's, it's a pretty large group and large variation. So that's why I think researchers are taking this very carefully uh, to make sure that the vaccines are safe for the children and also give the protection. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, in the coming months, uh, the, the vaccine will be approved for younger age groups. But in the meantime, it's very important for us to uh, apply these layered uh, interventions. So for example, uh, what we found in our research that uh, more than 70% of susceptible student population uh, might be infected by the end of semester if we do not put in place some serious interventions. Um, so masking, of course, is key, uh, as well as regular testing of students would help um, with isolation, of course. But even with testing, if we do not have masking in place, we could still have more than 50% of the susceptible students infected by the end of the semester. So this is very serious, and I think that's why we really need these multi-layer interventions uh, in the schools to protect our children. I'm wondering if cases do start to rise at a given school where it gets to that point of 50%, 70% of students getting infected, what does the data suggest about that threshold for deciding if and when a school should go back to virtual learning or implement more stringent restrictions? Yes, yeah, so the, the 50 to 70% numbers, I'm, I'm basically quoting cumulative for the end of the semester, right? So for example, you might see only a handful of students uh, being infected uh, in a given week, uh, we actually ran some scenarios where we said, okay, maybe to begin with, we have about two to three percent of incoming students uh, have uh, have the infection, and then maybe one new infection is coming from outside, not transmitted inside the school, but coming from outside weekly. Even this low level of uh, uh, transmission uh, can actually cause a, a fairly large number of students being infected by the end of the semester. Uh, if there are no uh, serious interventions in place. This is because in part, um, again, we don't have the vaccines protecting the, ch the children. Mm -hmm. And also because the Delta variant that is the, the, pre pre uh, the dominant uh, one that we see right now in the US is very contagious. It's much, much more contagious than what we have seen uh, with, the, with the earlier um, uh, cases uh, earlier in the beginning of the pandemic. I think all of these put together, uh, you know, uh, makes this a very serious situation, which, which requires some really serious uh, prevention action from the schools. Dr. Pinar Kiss-Kinochek, thank you so much, Reggie Wade. As always, good to see you.